Hello, my name is Alexander Fedintsev, and today I'm going to be talking about the role of the extracellular matrix in the aging process. Uh, many people think that ECM crosslinks are responsible only for vascular stiffening and wrinkle formation. However, I think that this view highly underestimates the importance of the ECM crosslinking. And I'll start, I'll start proving that uh, from the point of stem cell aging. Um, there, are, there are plethora of studies showing that um, stem cell aging can be rescued by exposing old stem cells to a young extracellular matrix. Uh, here you can see how the old ECM negatively affa affects both uh, cells from young, young and old mice uh, while ECM extracted from young animals uh, influences positively both on uh, young and old, old stem cells. So you can see on the graph uh, how young ECM is beneficial for cell, stem, cell, stem cell proliferation, uh, while old ECM is detrimental for proliferation. And this is not a sole study. There are multitude of them. We can see that um, stiffening of the extracellular matrix um, negatively influence um, muscle stem cells, the central nervous system progenitor cells, while restoring the, uh, while using the young ma matrix restores the quantity and quality of uh, the Zenchemal stem cells. This together gives us a hope that uh, once we will be able to rejuvenate uh, our extracellular matrix, uh, this also at least partly will rejuvenate stem cells and eliminate this hallmark of aging. But moving forward, I would like to consider another hallmark of aging, probably the most known one. It's cellular senescence. And uh, surprisingly, or not, it is also connected with the extracellular matrix. For instance, ex uh, exposing uh, senescent fibroblasts to a young matrix, matrix obtained from young cells, uh, also rejuvenates, at least partly rejuvenates uh, this senescent fibroblast, and it can be seen on the graph that the proliferation of old uh, fibroblasts, senescent fibroblasts, on a young matrix uh, it increases a lot compared to old fibroblasts on the old matrix. However, of course, this is not the complete restoration of proliferation rates, but this is a substantial improvement. Uh, but this study was done in vitro. What about in vivo? First, we need to consider the changes that aging causes to our um, proteins, uh, to, to proteins of the extracellular matrix. One of the, one of the important consequences of uh, glycation, because glycation is uh, one of the most important drivers of ECM aging. And one of the consequences of glycation is stiffening the, uh, the, of the extracellular, extracellular matrix. Another important consequence is resistance to matrix degrading enzymes. You can clearly see this from, uh, from these pictures. Uh, for instance, seven, uh, seven days uh, of ribo ribose exposure. Uh, cross-links collagen to such a degree that even 25-hour in incubation or 
uh, of incubation in collagenase cannot degrade the collagen uh, completely. It even cannot mm, degrade part of, of this uh, collagen strip. And uh, this also happens in vivo in, uh, in our skin collagen. Uh, so with increasing age, the, fraction, the soluble of fraction of collagen decreases significantly. And researchers, researchers tried to reproduce that by creating a genetically modified mice uh, with uh, a mutation in collagen 1 gene that uh, makes this collagen uh, extremely resistant to collagenase. And what they have observed, uh, they observed uh, progeria. These mice developed progeria, prema premature senescence. And also uh, they observed uh, accumulation of, uh, of a high quantity of senescent cell, uh, cells in the arteries of, of uh, these mice. Uh, you can clearly see this on the picture. Uh, but what are the mechanisms connecting uh, ECM and senes cellular senescence? First of all, uh, what are current explanations of this uh, phenomenon? Uh, it is thought that uh, cell cellular senescence is a mechanism that uh, helps to remove uh, damaged or potentially oncogenic cells, but this uh, contradicts a little bit uh, with the fact that cellular senescence leads to so-called SASP, senescence associated secretory phenotype, which, um, which consists of several pro-cancerous uh, pro molecules, inflam inflammatory cytokines, and what is more important, matrix degrading enzymes. On the other hand, there are studies that clearly show that uh, cellular senescence is a crucial step in wound healing. And uh, in fact, it, it is a program that um, prevents the fibrosis. And then, the, then SASP makes, uh, makes sense because uh, it contains matrix degrading enzymes which are needed to destroy, to degrade excessive amounts of collagen, which are basically cause of fibrosis. But uh, what, why uh, this accumulation of senescent cells happens during normal aging? Because uh, aging is uh, not universally associated with uh, fibrosis. And I, uh, propose a hypothesis connecting these two things. Fibrosis is these three things, uh, fibrosis, ECM, glycation, and cellular senescence. In my opinion, um, cellular senescence during aging is, a, is the same reaction, uh, is the same response to a fibrosis, but in the absence of fibrosis. Cells need, need to sense the fibrotic environment and they might use for that um, mechanical properties of the surrounding environment. One of the properties might be, for instance, stiffness. And the collagen uh, is stiff enough molecule, it's much stiffer than elastin. And uh, when, when there is excessive de depos deposition of uh, collagen, the environment becomes more stiffer. Cells sense this uh, increase in stiffness and become senescent to degrade the uh, excessive amounts of collagen. And, but with aging, 
uh, stiffness of matrix comes uh, from another from another point from another side it came from glycation glycation makes uh, collagen collagen stiffer due to cross-linking and here i depicted this relationship uh, both a uh, wound wound and aging cause stiffness which might induce cellular senescence via this possibly via CCN1 uh, upregulation of CCN1 expression. So if this true, if this is true, then um, it might explain this overall accumulation of senescent cells in, in the body. Um, and from this point of view, senescent cellular senescence uh, could be considered as a as a response to um, to systemic pseudo fibrosis, something like that. Um, this logic could be also applied to uh, to the brain, ECM, um, to make synapses. Uh, each neuron is surrounded by uh, by an ECM. Uh, it is called a perineuronal net, perineuronal network. It is comprised of slightly different molecules, like uh, completely different molecules than uh, ECM in other parts of the body, but still it, it is um, an ECM and cells to form synapses need to degrade, as you can see uh, on the picture. Uh, but what if glycation makes these molecules also resistant to matrix degrading enzymes? Then, uh, then it is hard to form new synapses because uh, it is hard to degrade uh, ECM. And so uh, the neuroplasticity should uh, decrease in that case. Of course, we have no direct evidences that there, there is such a process in the ECM of, of the brain. But at least we know that, um, but at least we know that uh, proteoglycans are also subject to glycation in, in the cartilage. Uh, uh, though this is not directly uh, the same proteoglycans that are in in the brain, so the hypothesis the, the hypothesis is itself uh, might explain a lot. So we need to consider that possibility either. Um, for more details, uh, please read our paper with Professor Alexei Moskalov um, in the journal uh, Asian Research Reviews. Thank you for your attention. Goodbye.